I've had this battery operated pump for about 10 years and it's been a great pump to have around for use on my bicycle and even my car. Some months ago the hose finally gave out and I've had trouble finding a replacement since. Today, rather than searching for a hose to fit the pump, I'm going to reverse things and redesign this pump to fit a more standard sized hose that should be easier to find. See how I do this next. I'm not sure how this project will pan out because I've never done a conversion like this. I feel with the compressor still working perfectly fine, it would be a waste to just dispose of it. I'm starting out by removing the shell of the pump to get a better idea of what I'm working with. My goal is to get a commonly available hose from the hardware store that fits the hose head of a tire pump. Then get that hose fitted to the compressor inside the shell of the pump I'm dismantling. Now that I have the electronics exposed, it'll help me decide on a plan for the hose replacement. I was hoping the plastic piece sticking out of the shell was just an attachment to something easier to work with. And looking at this view now, I can see the piece sticking out of the shell is a permanent part of the compressor. That'll make this project a lot tougher to complete, but I'll see what I can find at the hardware store. On the positive side of things, I did notice something I had researched in the past unsuccessfully. The compressed air in this pump is produced by an electric motor that actuates the compressor to create the pressurized airflow. I had always wondered if there existed a compressor that could use a drill to power it. That's basically what this pump does using the electric motor. This could be a future conversion project. Since there's nothing internal that will help with rebuilding the replacement hose and all the ongoing work will occur externally, I'll reassemble the pump. It's nice to know there's a potential to convert this electric pump into a drill powered pump. It'll most likely happen the next time the battery goes dead. Because my initial plan of getting the pump to fit any hose size is no longer an option, I'll have to go back to looking for a hose that will fit the compressor connection protruding from the pump. These are the pieces I felt might work in combination with each other to do what I'm looking for, but attempting to combine these parts will be a challenge in itself, as I'll demonstrate shortly. One problem I had with this Schrader connector was that the connection to the previous pump hose broke off and I was left with only this unusable larger diameter portion. In an attempt to have an end to connect the pump hose to, I want to combine this brass fitting to the Schrader connector. In doing so, it'll convert the unusable end of the Schrader connector into a size easier to connect a hose to. Before I combine the brass fitting with the Schrader connector, I'm removing the washer so it doesn't melt in the heating process I'll use to combine the two pieces. I'm hoping this washer is enough to make the seal airtight, but if not, I'll have to also pick up a rubber washer of similar size. To combine the brass fitting with the Schrader connector, I meant to heat the brass fitting with a torch, but then I realized I misplaced the torch nozzle. So I'm attempting to heat the brass fitting with my stove burner. When screwing the Schrader connector into the brass fitting, I'm hoping the plastic will melt and take the shape of the threads it's being screwed into. I've never attempted this before, so I wasn't sure it would work. I have my fingers crossed that it does work and also that the joined pieces creates an airtight seal. As you can see in the foreground, I've completed the Schrader end of the hose connector. Now I'm working on the pump side of the hose connector. Originally, the order of how the parts connected to the pump were rubber bushing, red cap, then brass fitting. For my purposes now, I'm changing the order slightly to rubber bushing, brass fitting, then the red cap will hold the other two pieces in place in a different but still effective way. It may be hard to see here, but the brass fitting on the pump side requires a different sized hose from the brass fitting on the Schrader connection side. I'm off to the hardware store to see if I can find an adapter for the Schrader side that will accept the same hose that fits the pump side. After trying out different brass fittings and hoses at the hardware store, I was surprised to find a hose that did fit both the Schrader and pump side of my cordless pump. I think I misjudged the size needed to connect to both sides of the hose and realized at the hardware store that the pump side didn't need as large a hose as I thought it did. 
With the same quarter inch holes able to fit both connector ends, I'll do a quick assembly of everything, connecting it all hand tight just to see how much it will leak and make appropriate adjustments where needed. I did some initial testing off camera because I wasn't sure how well my rushed assembly would hold up. The pump end of the holes held up very well with no leaking sounds at all coming from that area. On the other hand, the Schrader side of the hose had all kinds of hissing noises from multiple places. I ended up cranking down the two hex fittings with adjustable wrenches, which I think I was supposed to do anyway. With that, there was still a leak, so I removed the Schrader connector from the fitting, lined it with plumber's tape, and screwed it back together. Doing all of that now closed up any leaks and I'm able to pump my bicycle tire up to 50 psi. I can still hear a slight leak but it seems to be coming from the connector rather than any of the fittings I added on. I probably can't fix it if it's coming from the connector but the leak seems to be slow enough to where I can pump my tire up and it fills with air faster than it leaks the air even at 50 psi. To attempt a repair on the pump end of the hose, I'm reinforcing the quarter inch tubing by slipping over it a snug fitting larger size tubing. I'm hoping the overall thickness in tubing will prevent the hose from expanding to a point where it can pop off from the pump connection. One last thing I had to change was the hose. As you can see here, the hose is now white rather than clear. The clear one had a 55 psi limit that I thought would be enough for my bicycle, and it was, but pumping my car tire caused the hose to burst. This new one has a 120 psi limit, which should get me through all of my common needs. This ends part 1 of a 2 part video. As mentioned during the teardown, this pump is driven by an electric motor. The motor can just as easily be replaced by a drill. Eventually, when the battery for this cordless pump can no longer be recharged, I'll make a conversion video turning this cordless pump into an accessory that can be attached to a cordless drill. The current battery is about 5 years old, and the previous battery lasted about that long. So, I'm guessing this battery could be close to the end of its life. Your hose repair may not be exactly like this one, but I hope this video puts some ideas in your head as to what you can do for a repair as opposed to trashing your existing pump and buying a new one. Leave your questions and comments in the comment section below. That's all I have for now and I'll catch you in the next video.